Hello everyone, in this video we're setting off on a journey to the edge of the universe. We're on our way. If you haven't seen what the edge of the universe looks like in this space engine planetarium you're about to find out. For my part, I'll add that for me, there are always amazing worlds to be found at the edge of the universe. Make yourselves comfortable. Enjoy your journey and enjoy watching. So I've reached the point where there are no more galaxies and here we are in complete darkness. And if you look at it like this you can see just the edge of the universe. This is what it all looks like in the space engine planetarium for example. I'll make the exposure even brighter so you can clearly see everything, as if it's a wall and really the edge. I'm resetting the exposure to its original position. At the edge of the universe I found a galaxy like this. I'll show you now. This is how it looks, that's its structure. And in this galaxy, I'll pick the very last star right at the edge of the universe. And here's something I found. Here we have a white star. Let's fly to this system. And here is such a bright star. In automatic photo mode, it looks like this. But of course it looks much more beautiful in HDR mode. Let's see what kind of planetary system this star has. There's not just one star here, there's also a yellow dwarf. And here it is, really close, very close actually. If I zoom out you'll see that there are two stars orbiting close to each other here. And in fact, there are at least nine planets orbiting around them. Let's take a look at the most interesting ones among them. Here's the second planet in the system. This is quite an unusual world, it's a hot desert terra. It's obviously hot on this planet, 572 degrees celsius. I'm on the surface of this planet. This is what the sky looks like here. And we can see two bright stars in the daytime sky of this planet. Also, I notice that there are still active volcanoes on this planet. The next interesting planet here is apparently the fourth and fifth, although I'd even say the fifth one is more interesting. So let's head to the fifth planet in this system. And here we have a cool lake covered terra. That is, there is some kind of liquid on the surface. The planet is all in shades of pink. And here in fact we can see this liquid, yes. And this liquid, as shown, is made up of ammonia, sulfur dioxide and even hydrogen sulfide. Obviously there is no liquid water here at all. And the temperature is minus 58 degrees celsius. And I landed at one of the shores. This is how it looks here. And here's the view of the stars. There are also active volcanoes on this planet. Let me show you one up close. Well, I'll descend onto these mountains here and we'll see some incredible views. This is such a beautiful place, the view is simply stunning. If we go a little lower and take another look from here, well it's interesting in its own way too. I've picked out this spot and now let's see what the sunset looks like on this planet. Enjoy watching everyone. An incredible sunset, and there almost two stars were setting at the same time. And now we have a nighttime view. Here, from this part of the planet, we can see a view of the galaxy we're in. But if we turn the camera this way, that's the edge of the universe, and apart from clouds, there's nothing visible there. I waited until it was deep night. Moin chic oi o. Now the view of this galaxy has become even more mesmerizing. But if you look again toward the edge of the universe, it's just pitch black here. Not a single star, not a single galaxy, not a single planet. But this particular planet has one very rather large moon, which is quite close to the planet indeed. Its diameter is 2712 kilometers, and here it is, you can see it. And this moon gives the planet its own unique charm. The view here is simply magical. There's also a rather beautiful planet in this system. Here it is, we're arriving there. This is a cold planet with enormous rings. We can see its moons. There are as many as 19 moons. But right now we can see only the largest ones. This planet has a thin atmosphere of some kind. And here are the magnificent rings and moons. And at night, what an amazing view there is here. This is the automatic photo mode. The rings and moons are very bright. I'll speed up time a little more. Let's make it 100 or even 300 times faster. We can see the movement of the moons. It's simply a magnificent sight. Now it's time to leave this system. Let's fly to a planet with life in this same galaxy. So guys, life on the edge of the universe sounds incredible, doesn't it? And now this planet appears before our screens. Look at how truly beautiful it is. And here, we don't just have a planet with life as we are accustomed to, but only organic, multicellular, airborne life forms. 
So here guys, life exists only in the air, not on land. Well, this is a hot lake terror with life. The temperature here is 274 degrees. Well, that's why life is in the air, because it's cooler up there. The atmospheric pressure is 474 atmospheres. There are beautiful lakes here, and by the way, they are made purely of fresh water. This planet is tidally locked to its parent star. And let's guess, the star here is definitely a red dwarf. Yes, that's right. There's a red dwarf here. I suggest we descend somewhere into these desert regions, the yellow ones. And here on the surface, it's just incredibly unusual. This green atmosphere looks absolutely amazing. Now I've turned on HDR mode and everything looks like this. The star shines through the atmosphere like this. Look, I'm just above the mountain peaks and what a haze there is here. Everything is illuminated like this, it's simply magnificent. Like I said, at the very edge of the universe, you'll always find truly amazing worlds that are just absolutely mesmerizing with their incredible spectacle. Look at this truly wonderful view of a serene lake in the majestic mountains that I found on this remarkable planet. There are simply no adequate words for how incredibly cool this looks. And this is how the star shines here. It's incredible. And also, not far from this place, I saw what looked like the beginning of a river. Yes, right next to this lake, it seems like a river is starting here. Actually, yes, that's exactly what it is. Here you go, this really does look like a flowing river. Let's fly along it and see where it eventually ends, whether it's long or not. But it seems like it runs into some mountain again and ends there. No, look, it seeps through here as well. But after that, that's it, you can't see it anymore. And since there's no real sunset here, I can't show you a sunset on this planet. But I descended into the twilight zone and switched to automatic photo mode. And wow, how incredible. Look at this. This is just an unbelievable sight. Seriously, I like just for this view of the star, and what's most interesting is that the atmosphere here is made up of nitrogen, oxygen and water vapor. So there's nothing unusual that would make the atmosphere look so green. I honestly have no idea. Well, if you look more closely at this planet, it says that there is carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, as well as argon, neon, carbon monoxide and helium. But the concentration of these elements is actually very low compared to nitrogen, oxygen and water vapor. Here, nitrogen makes up 78%, oxygen 11% and water vapor 10%. And then the concentration of all the other elements drops off sharply. Now let's leave this galaxy and fly to another one. This one is also at the edge of the universe. Here's a spiral galaxy like this. This is basically how it looks. Once again, you can see that it's at the edge of the universe. There's nothing on this side. In this galaxy, I found a rather beautiful nebula. Let's fly over there. I'll show it to you up close. Here it is. Such beauty, really. This is a diffuse type nebula, meaning it's formed after a supernova explosion. From every angle, it looks like this. And in this nebula, I found a rather beautiful object. Let's fly over to it. Just look at the incredible beauty here. This is a fascinating moon, and it's a very unusual one, orbiting such a truly beautiful gas giant. What makes this moon so incredibly special is, look at its vibrant purple seas and shimmering lakes. It's incredible. And according to the planetarium, this moon has liquids made of carbon-2 hydrogen-2, hydrogen sulfide and carbon-2 hydrogen-6. The pressure is almost 3 atmospheres and the average temperature is minus 74 degrees Celsius. I'll switch to auto mode now. In auto mode, the nebula isn't visible, but you can clearly see these two objects. And I'll also mention that the diameter of this moon is over 10,700 kilometers. This planet is larger than Mars and its mass is 45% that of Earth. Switching back to HDR display. And these objects are located inside this kind of nebula. It's just incredible. It's so beautiful here. Just imagine what it will be like on the surface. And here's an unusual spot I found on this moon. Guys, this is a river. A river that's red in color. Even if I dive underwater, look at how it really is here. And there's also a star here. Wow, everything is so red. Alright, let's move along this flowing river, and sooner or later, we'll inevitably end up in some vast ocean, or a large lake, or a deep sea. Well, basically, here's the primary outlet to the sea. And here, everything is quite red as well. I truly don't know if it's from the intense glow of the star, or if it's actually such a vibrant red liquid, because from space, it all looked distinctly purple. But if you look at it closely like this, everything looks just absolutely wonderful. That's it, I've risen a little higher and everything gets decorated like this. You see, it's a blue-violet color. Near the coast, everything is so red. I landed on another island in the middle of this body of water. This is how everything looks here. The atmosphere in general is quite similar to Earth's, though it leans even more towards blue than sky blue. 
and we can also see neighboring moons that orbit the parent gas giant. But the gas giant itself unfortunately can't be seen from here. But it's no problem to move to another location. And here, there's this incredible view of the gas giant. I'm switching to automatic photo mode. It's even a little bit better this way in my opinion. Now let's speed up time a little. Let's see how everything moves in the sky. There the star is either setting below the horizon or hasn't set yet. But I've descended much closer to the pole, so maybe the star won't set at all. Apparently there was no eclipse, and we can see the changing phases of this beautiful gas giant and the rotation of the neighboring moons closest to us. I've descended almost to the very base of these mountain peaks. And as you can see, this is the view that opens up of this gas planet. And here I found an interesting mountain. They're all so colorful here. You can see how many different colors there are at the top of this mountain. And now, let's watch the sunset on this remarkable moon. Here we have a yellow dwarf star. It's just simply going to set below the horizon. Enjoy watching. A magnificent sunset. And now the night sky truly opens up, revealing a truly wonderful view of this magnificent nebula. It's just unbelievably beautiful. Wow! Here we also have the disk of this galaxy, and the nebula is everywhere everywhere. I'll even fly out in this direction, how cool it looks, and from this side too. Incredible. Guys, if you haven't liked the video yet, here's a reason to do it. And look, we can also see a satellite, and I've also found a spot where you can see the gas giant and this nebula together at once. And we can also see clouds that are actually slightly below us. I'll lower myself down on purpose to truly see how everything looks from here. And this is indeed how everything looks quite clearly here. If you turn on auto mode, everything looks way too bright of course. So now I'll adjust the exposure and let's see how it would look more or less to the human eye. Well, I think this is about how we would see it. Of course our human eyes wouldn't be able to catch this nebula. Although, who knows? Write about it in the comments. If we were inside the nebula, we might be able to see it. And now I've moved a bit higher, and here is a truly full view of this immense gas giant. Now I will show you precisely how the central black hole looks within this vast galaxy we're in. Here's what the black hole looks like here. It has a yellow accretion disk, and I'll also turn on the automatic photo mode. Wow. Oh, it looks even more stunning this way. So in general it's quite an interesting black hole here. I'll speed up time a bit more. This is how the accretion disk around the black hole moves, and you can see the jets coming out. All in all the black hole is quite active. And even in real time mode, you can see the accretion disk spinning. It's actually quite fast. That's the kind of journey we had today. The edge of the universe never fails to amaze and astonish. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and write a comment about what stood out to you the most during this journey, and how you felt about it overall. Thank you very much for watching, and see you again in the universe.